Is that right? Just, yep. I, I threw it in the rundown when I'm going to do it. You can switch it if you want. <laughs> no, no, that works. Um, I need to I get us going. All right. I'm ready. And the Warriors win 121-115 against the Orlando Magic. Welcome to Light Ears. Andy Lou, I did a much, a much, a much needed W. Ooh. That's where I'm at. With you almost game, had, right? you almost had must win. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> new year, new Warriors, uh, baby. We're back. One I win. I think it's, I think, uh, you know, I texted you before the game and I'm like, man, we are in the fucking dog days. I, there's no other way to put it. It doesn't matter if your season's going well or it's uh, kind of mediocre the way the Warriors season goes right now. At some point in the season, you're going to hit that. Ugh, it's middle of the season dog days, right? Like I think everyone except for OKC is in the dog days right now, right? The, they're they're enjoying life. Yeah, they're 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 living the 2014-15 Warriors <laughs> dream, right? It's exactly what they're doing. So no, it, it is right. It is especially these older guys, especially for Steph, CP3, Clay. These guys been through so many of these, which is why it was fun to see Kaminga. We'll get into it tonight. Play with so much energy, right? right? TJD was all the pods as always. Uh, played a bunch of good minutes, so you know it, it's nice that the Warriors these type of games they get to uh, they get to show off the guys that are you know technically what the second timeline and they played very well tonight. But I mean, come on, the story is the guy that's thirty five that uh, that uh, dog days or not, he uh, he, he uh, decided to just take over the game. Tonight. Do you do you agree with me? Steph's been kind of um, sulking last couple <sighs> weeks. Like sulking. I. I it's, been playing below his standards i hold steph to higher standards than that as yes. we're both wearing the light ears steph better hoodies right now kind of look like tools wearing the same <laughs> sweatshirt at the same time with, with the but, step you know. in the back you know you gotta love us <laughs> gotta love us but, but that's a different conversation but like I, look yeah i think he is one of the five to ten best players of all time yeah. i hold him to incredibly high standards I think he would admit he has been playing below his standards. Yep. The last couple, I don't know, week, 10 days. Well, it doesn't really matter how long it is. And uh, and his like body language has kind of sucked. We were kind of due for one of these, you know, kind of Steph being, you know, fuck it. I'm gonna I'm just gonna remind everyone how good I am and kind of assert my will type of games. Wasn't perfect. But it was just like it just shows you how good he is, in my opinion. Where I think he, I think he played really well for like I don't know two and a half quarters of this game, and it's like an easy thirty six. Oh, yeah, easy. Like you know, if he if he brought that same energy and intensity, it's a fifty point game for the if he goes all four quarters. And he's yelling after making. Mm-hmm. I, it's not the same, but it reminded me a little bit of, you know, game four in Boston. Um, but, like, that that's the type of stuff where I, I, I think we haven't seen from him, like you said, for weeks now. And it's also against one of the better defenses in the NBA, one of the better teams right, right. in the NBA. It's kind of surprised. I know they're slowing down a little bit lately in the last few weeks. But Jalen Suggs, dude, I mean, he's one of the best wing defender, perimeter defenders in the NBA. I mean, <laughs> he's not that far behind guys like GB2 and Drew Holiday, that's for sure. Um, and Steph cooked him a uh, ton of little pick and rolls and, and, and kind of ISOs. They put the ball more in his hands, less CP3 with the ball. So he just kind of got in a better rhythm. He was hot most of the night. He came back after sitting like eight minutes and came back in the fourth and was hot. Um, you're right, though. For a few weeks there, I mean, we weren't going to sit here and say, like, is he slowing maybe, down? Maybe, but... maybe not in a couple few weeks, but it's like, yeah, I don't know, three, four, five games, right? You know? Yeah, it's just – you can't – it's just – I mean, you even look at LeBron, and the Lakers are struggling now, and LeBron's been struggling the last couple games too. It's the same thing. Like these guys are old; they can't just be. And which is why we have to. Why we say you got to get Kaminga in there to play better, right? Pods, you got to mm-hmm. get guys in there to help him because what you just can't you can't have twenty sixteen Steph all the damn time. But then you have some games like this where he took apart what I think is a top three five defense, and it looked like. It, it didn't even look that hard to him, right? So, um, mm. pretty incredible. Yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those things where they needed it, and that's kind of my my thing with Steph. You know, 
few games in a row where they look subpar and his body language looks subpar for what you expect from him. And, you know, being the player he is, enough. Shut up. Orlando's talented team. They're going to make the playoffs. Uh, what are they, four or five seed in the East right now? They're huge and physical. They're not a fun team to play against, though. Like, it, not that fun to watch team? either. No, they, yeah, very exactly. Eastern it's, Conferency, it's, you know. Yeah, physical ass team, size, can't really hit shots, uh, grind type of team. And you know what? Like, the, I think the Warriors needed a win like this. And I feel like the other story of the game is kind of Kuminga versus Franz Wagner yes. a little bit. And that was fun. That was fun to watch because. Uh, look, they took Kuminga seven. Franz went eight. Franz has had a better career than Kuminga to date. Looks like the better player. And honestly, Franz was good tonight. Really good. A 6'10 guy who can handle the ball like that. The funny thing is, I'm not sure Franz is a better shooter than Kuminga at all. Like, I think they're both kind of subpar shooters from deep. But Franz is such a strong ball handler and can just kind of patient playmaker, all that sort of stuff. But I think Kuminga kind of played him straight. Like it, it was kind of a, you know, pick your flavor type of performance with two. Like Kuminga's a better athlete, definitely did more things defensively, made a lot of plays in transition. Uh, Franz a little more like patient in the half court that way. Uh, but I, you could, you could tell. Kuminga wanted to make a statement, be like, I'm yep. better than him. I'm just as good as him. I don't get the opportunities he gets. If I did, I'd be putting up 25 a game also. Type you uh, you sound like Kuminga's agent uh, or, or, actually, <laughs> or actually just Kuminga, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah. You could you could see Kuminga came out, play with uh, just unreal energy, just like classic uh, uh, fuck you energy uh, tonight where mm-hmm. it's just, you know, like you said, um, I should be as good as this guy given the opportunity. And tonight I thought was one of his best games of the of the season. I thought the playmaking was was really cool. He had a pos- possession in the in the second quarter. I think it was the second. No, it was the third quarter um, that he really like, instead of just going straight into people, which I think he's he's gotten better at this season, he kicked it out to Steph in- instead with Steph uh, respotting, which I thought was, I was like, oh my goodness. Um, that's not something he normally does. That's not really his – that's not the first thing going through his mind, right? So um, the playmaking was really cool. He had four assists tonight. But it was really the decision-making because when Kaminga plays with good play – and you can argue, is he playing with better decision-making because he's getting to play more? Is that why? Or is he just maybe trying harder to make better decisions? Uh, I don't know. I'd argue maybe just he's playing more. He's in better rhythm, right? Like that's kind of how it goes for young players and – uh uh, and you're right. I was impressed, impressed by Franz. Like there's no, I don't think you can, I, I think you can argue both ways uh, for both guys, but it is, it is not, it is yeah, it's, undoubtably it's, it's, that Franz has been a better player through his career. It, it's it, my, my whole thing on it is it's not a Wiseman situation. <laughs> uh, Kuminga is objectively a player and, you know, sometimes I watch him and I'm like, you know, he, he might just be Jeremy Grant who's still a good starting caliber player. Yeah, other times I money. watch him, I'm like, hmm, he might, he might, he might, you know, the handle might come around. The playmaking might come around. We might be looking at an all-star. We might be looking at a uh, Siakam, Jalen Brown level player, like, you know, th- that sort of thing. And like, you know, he's young, too early to tell. I don't feel definitively either way. Like, I hey, love when we see like a good flash game from him and we love to yeah. throw out the comps, you know, it's got, of course, it's got, oh, uh, see, uh, I, I, I can I, see the, uh, the post game is there though. His pro post game is really mature. He's strong. Really he's, matured. He's an athlete. And like any way you slice it, like he's going to have a long NBA career and he should be a productive player for, for the stretch of it. And, you know, it, if Franz ends up having the better player, you're going to walk away from it going, well, you know, we got a good player, but that guy was a little better. So it's not like, it's not the the nightmare scenario that like you take Wiseman well, and you're like, oh, that dude might not be in the NBA well, in a year. Right? I also like, think, you know what I'm saying? I also think Franz isn't going to end up being Tyrese Halliburton, right? Like that. that's the right, only case right. where maybe we're looking at two fringy all-star guys 
and um and we're not and looking it, at one it's guy. A fit. It's yeah. a fit comp question. Yeah. I can see that. less so one guy's gonna be top eight in the MVP, top five in the MVP, and right. the other guys the other guy to your point is gonna be playing on the Shanghai Sharks in, in, in less than two seasons. And it's just and, and so this one, this one I, I think you're I think you're right with the fringy all-star stuff where it's like Jalen Brown's fringy all-star, same with Siakam, Jeremy Grant's not an all-star at all, but he's a productive role player. Uh, made a lot of money. I always throw that out there. Guys made a lot of money. Jeremy Grant's are kind of unbelievable, honestly. NBA is an incredible place. But um, but yeah, I think that's that's where he ends up being. Being, being a six seven athlete and being able to sometimes hit a jump shot will get you paid for a Pretty long, great. long time. Pretty great. Pretty it's like those, it's like that. It's always I know football has a lot of positions, but um man, NBA players and MLB players, when you can get it, those contracts are incredible. You know, football, I feel like even football, unless you're like an elite quarterback, which is how many do we have in the world? Like five, six, uh, like those only five, six guys are getting like that, that amount of money. But then man, in the NBA, you're talking about these guys are getting $150 million. How much is Franz going to get? Unless he's got a contract that max, I don't know about. It. Max. Yeah. Right. How much is a max? How much 250, is 250? So, oh so, so, so like, like he's, he's, he's good. He's good. But he's not, he's never going to be, he's not right. He's never going to be in the MVP conversation. He's never going to be like a number one on a title team, maybe number three. Right. So it's like, I just, I don't is he to is he better than Desmond Bain? Franz Wagner? Yeah. Um man, that's a great question. Totally different player. He just but, he just yeah. got maxed. That's like I I don't know. I'm not, I I don't actually care, but I think he's in the same caliber of player, right? You know? I I think Bain's better. But yeah, I I mean, what are you going to do? Give him five million dollars less? Yeah, sure, sure, right? sure. It's, it's your point. It's like, <laughs> man, what a he'll be fi- he'll be fine, what right? A he'll dream. be fine. What a dream. and his brother's good. Like Mo Wagner is actually good at basketball. I don't know why he didn't play as much, um, but like they've like you said, they're they're back to the game. They're they're an ugly style team, but effective because they've just got a bunch of great defenders um, on on their squad. They you know they could use Steph Curry. <laughs> yeah, they don't. They don't have they want, anyone. They want Chris Paul. They want Chris Paul? anyone who sh- can shoot the ball in any capacity. Uh, I'm surprised that they were 14 for 36 because I feel like when I watch them, it's just a root canal. <laughs> in general, well, it, is, like, it is the Warriors. So you know, it's, they're just this. They're, they're just like it's like Apollo or Franz in the post trying to out physical you the entire way, uh, and they're good at it. But like, it's, do you like Apollo? Like, you enjoy it's watching, fine. yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Um, those are two different questions. I think he's good. <laughs> like he's legitimately a good player, but I, not my favorite to watch. No, no, he's uh But I also wonder how much of that's because Orlando doesn't have a guard who can shoot the ball. Like, how much? How would you feel about Paulo Bancaro if he played with Tyrese Halbert or? or uh, Tyrese Maxey. I'm just gonna name every Tyrese. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like like a guard who has a little a little flash, who can shoot it from deep, who can push the pace. Yeah, next thing you know, you're watching Bancaro finishing and transition. Uh, you know, kind of using his athleticism and IQ in a more productive way than like pounding it in the half court. Like you might feel completely different about him that way. Yeah. They need they need a type of guard that does pass a little more too. I don't. I guess Anthony Black, thirteen minutes tonight. I think as he's supposed to be that type of player. He's a rookie, dude. I don't. There's not much you could do. Markel Fultz is out, but he's not really a passing guard either. I don't. They, they're rough. They're they're a rough watch. They're good though, but they're rough. This is how you know we're in the dog days. We're talking way too much Orlando Magic. <laughs> <laughs> People don't need to hear us talk about Wiggins again. By the way, actually, before we, I know we got like a next topic coming up, but did you did you think? Do you think Wiggins is is playing better than Kaminga right now? Do you think they should be playing together? Because that popped up to me. He got I don't know if he got benched, but he didn't close. Wiggins didn't, and uh, that's an in- interesting one. I okay. I understand why Kerr doesn't play them together, but I disagree with him. So can, can we talk about that? Because yep. like it, I do agree with you, Wiggins. I thought his energy level was good tonight. He's been playing a few games in a row. Yeah. Of. Uh, of just like a, I don't know, it, it feels like whatever slump he was in the early season, you start snap out of it. Shot isn't all the way there, but like the energy is where I want it to be. Uh, I thought Kuminga played great, but it does feel like Steve's going with the either or thing, and I just wonder if he, you know, 
time 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 to deal with the fact they're an imperfect fit and just play them together more right? yeah the comments from from bobby today i mean right now the inability to play wiggins and coming it together is a failure of curse system more than anything yeah i don't i don't know I, that makes sense to me because i mean in theory you should be able to play those guys together mm-hmm. um you don't need to play them together and then throw chris paul on there i know there's some rebounding and shooting issues but I mean, yeah they do kind of i don't know I don't know. It's, it was a good game today. Those guys separately played very well. Um, I, I think juicing up this team to make it an even better team, maybe not a 500 team. I think unlo- that unlocks it. Unless you're telling me this team is getting, you know, Siakam or something with those guys, which I don't know. But th- that's kind of the path forward is playing those two guys together. And this game was great. It's just I would love to see them play. Together. They played together a little bit against Sam, a little bit, a couple minutes. I know the sample size numbers aren't great with those guys, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just trying to hammer, hammer the fit in. Um, but I don't know we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I mean they played. Um, just looking at it, I think seven or so minutes tonight together, yeah, okay. which okay. is more than they've done in the past. Right. right. But it's still not a ton. Yeah. It's a lineup they need to explore. More and more. Yep. Those are your two best wing defenders, physically speaking. Even if they're not producing that way, like they have the highest upside. You need to play them more. Just yep. do it, you know? Yep. So yep. that's where we're at. Um, should we pay some bills? Yes, sir. Ice Light Years podcast is brought to you by our guy, Steph Curry. Under Armour, Curry brand, Steph Curry makes you believe you can do anything. And the Curry 11s are specifically designed with ultimate bounce, grip, and stability to allow everyone to do their thing. New generations of ball players are coming up and showing the basketball world that the old rules do not apply. The future is exciting, fast, positive, and hungry. This NBA season, rock with your favorite player and rep his shoes on and off the court. The Curry 11s are perfect for both the committed and casual ballers. The UA Warp Tech makes the shoe feel like it was designed for your feet, locked in no matter what you do on the court. Stop in your tracks with dual density UA flow cushioning and traction. But emergency brake, you don't even notice. Steph's 11th signature shoe steps into the second decade of his sneaker career, pulling colorway inspiration from the wonders of a positive and modernized future on and off the court. Take these kicks with you when you leave the scrimmage and rep UA wherever you go. Do your thing, change the game. The future 11. Future Curry is available now at currybrand.com. All right. We are brought to you by Lucy. Lucy. What is Lucy? Lucy makes next level nicotine. If you're tired of buying the same mediocre pouches wherever you go, stop settling and switch to Lucy. Why Lucy? Lucy stands out in an otherwise boring market because every other nicotine pouch company is owned by Big Tobacco. Lucy has pouches with flavor capsules for an instant rush. Nicotine strengths up to 12 mg and gum with actual flavor. What makes you see Lucy unique? Premium ingredients and flavors, 100% pure nicotine with no tobacco ever. A cornucopia of strengths and flavors from mild 2 mg to spicy 12 mg. Uh, stay, stay high, stay good with mint and wintergreen. Embrace island life with tropical mango and pomegranate, or get weird with espresso. An apple cider. Lucy is a perfect desk side companion, whether that's eight hours in Photoshop during the day or eight hours gaming your face off until 4 a.m. Skip stopping at the gas station and order online at lucy.co slash light years and use promo code light years to get 20% off your first order. Lucy offers free shipping and has a 30 day refund policy. If you change your mind, that's a Lucy, L U C Y dot co, C O, and use code light years to get 20% off and always. Free shipping, and here comes the fine print. Lucy products are only for adults of legal age, and every order is age verified. Warning: This product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addi- addictive chemical. Are you patch guy? Uh, I am. I am. I am. I am. Not as much as I used to be, Sam, but I am. Yeah. Oh, gets me through. <laughs> I, I shouldn't admit to how many patches I have a day. <laughs> People who know me know this isn't bullshit either. So uh it's um you know it's the it's the side effects of of going to UC Davis a bunch of years ago. Um but I will speak for Lucy. Definitely helpful getting through the work day, helpful 
concentrating and, and doing everything you need to do. Anyway, uh, let's put this forward. The comments are killing me, by the way. <laughs> I'm, you know what? They can kill me all they want. They can kill me all they want, but, you know. I don't lie. Like so. yours on the pouches. We, they they said we got to do a Roman next. We've had Roman before. We've had Roman uh, for sure. Uh, Manscaped always. Um, we'll get Roman back. We'll get Roman back. But we've got Lucy coming up now for you guys. So enjoy. Light years. All right. What do we got next? <laughs> Blue Chew. We got, we've done Blue Chew before too. All right. Enough. All, all, all the male supplements. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, Steve Kerr. Pre-game, had some interesting quotes about Draymond Green. For better or worse, we got to respond to them. So I'm going to play Steve, play Steve's audio real quick, talking about Draymond, who is, this, tonight was game 10. He's missed. Warriors are 6-4 and four without him. Uh, there's been times they've looked better without him. There's been times I've been like, I can't watch this team. But it is what it is. They're, he's missed 10 games now. We're in the January. We text. I know what he's trying to deal with isn't necessarily on the court, but do you know as far as what type of shape he's in? You know, is it going to be even once he comes back, it's going to take a while? Or, or? Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Oh. Oh. What is happening? Oh, yeah. You know, was, I, overall, I was in a good mood with tonight's game. And, no. You know, you got to have this to make me in a bad mood. I don't know. I, does Steve seem upset to you? Yeah, why is he so annoyed? I, I, it's not like those questions were out of uh, out of pocket or anything. It's a fair question. Steve's usually pretty nice with the media. Um, guys like him. He likes the media guys. And uh, one note I want to point out before, before you go is uh, I thought that Draymond could still practice with the team. That was reported, even though he's going to be suspended Correct. indefinitely. Um, yeah. Correct. Interesting to me that's that the, he's nowhere to be found. That's all. That's the most notable part of this. Um, it was reported he can be around the team and practice. Steve letting everyone know he's not. There's been some texting. Weird. Uh, I don't even know what to make of that. I, I, they miss him as a player, no matter how much you hate him. <laughs> they absolutely missed him defensively. That's true. And and I, I don't fault anyone for uh, wanting to move on from him and being like, you know what? It's it's too much. They do miss him as a player. They do. Uh, but with that said, listening to this, I don't know if you saw the TMZ stuff of him at LeBron's birthday. <sighs> I tend to not care about that sort of stuff, but it like, it just makes me roll my eyes when people are like, Oh, he needs to work on himself and figure it out. It's like, I don't know. It just feels like no one's taking this seriously. feels like the whole thing is a sham. I'll give you credit. You called it the minute the whole thing went down. You're just like, I don't buy any of this. (laughs) Uh, It's, it's one of those, it's getting weirder and weirder and weirder. I think because I actually, I thought they would kind of go par for the course. I, I know it's bullshit, but I thought maybe they they fake it enough so that he's be, he'd be back after fifteen games or ten right. games. Right. But now, I don't. Is Steve just kind of saying, "All right, we're just not going to talk about it till he comes back," or are they actually behind the scenes saying, "Yeah, I don't know how much more of this we can actually work with," and, and what you're saying is the team misses him on the court. And that's extremely true, but I think at some point, you know, this team is going to make big changes at the trade deadline. Big changes. I can promise you. We can promise you that. And is Draymond part of those big changes? I, I, it, see, it seems like it's – this would push that being true more than not, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I mean, maybe I'm a skeptic. I just expect – him to be back and them not to make that trade, but I can't rule it out as a possibility. 
Who would want them uh, too, right? Because it's, I mean, what, 100 million, exactly. 100 million that's, dollars. Jeez. That's the other. That's the other part. It's like, hey, you want to pick up this undersized big man who's owed a hundred million dollars and has anger management <laughs> issues and gets himself suspended all the time? Like, it, yeah, yeah, I don't know. And you can get Kamingo with them too. I don't know. I'm just, you yeah, know, I don't know. It's it's not great. It's yeah. it's not it's not a. Uh, it's not positive. That's why I kind of I just assume he's back, whether they want him to. But I don't know the way the way the way Kerr talks about it. Like it, that was a weird answer. I, I guess my my best case response to that is he was purposely being obtuse to make Draymond feel bad. That's like your best case scenario, and your worst case scenario is actually it's kind of a thing and they're not in any way reconciling and I, I don't know what direction it goes in. I can't answer which one of those two it is, but I, it would have been nicer to hear him be like, we're talking to Draymond. He's practicing or he's getting yeah. better. Or, Everything's yeah, yeah, working yeah. in the positive. And that was yeah. the opposite of what we heard. That That's kind of that. That'd be nice to hear, but, but then he can't even lie about that because he's not with the team, which is crazy. He said, he said, we're giving him space. Uh, and he's given us he's given us space. <laughs> like, what does that even mean, Steve? I, don't, I mean, actually, this is not Steve's fault um, at all. So it, it's Draymond's fault. And no, it, it, it's like I, if anything, I feel like Steve just kind of voicing it that way to be like, "Hey, I just want you guys to know this guy's a dick." You know, <laughs> like like he's just kind of being uh, unremorseful. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't feel the need to protect him. Yeah. Just, I've, I've been thinking about this. Uh, I get very frustrated with Andrew Wiggins, no, personally. No. Uh, and I didn't like the way they handled his absence last year. And I think he's played pretty bad basketball for most of this year. Yeah. And every time over all of 2023, Steve Kerr takes that podium and defends his ass. And says, you're wrong. He's going through something. I trust him. Not that big a deal. You guys are don't read into it. He he protects his player. And it's a complete opposite with Draymond. With Draymond, he's just like, yeah, haven't heard from him. I don't know what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> you know, like, and and that's kind of where it's just like, you know, that's it's kind of he he may he has a choice in how he wants to answer that question publicly. And he could easily just dance around it and give you the, uh, I don't want to say sob story, but like the, you know, Draymond's working through it and like we trust him and that sort of thing. He's not doing it. He doesn't want to. Yeah. Feels like uh, maybe he's just tired of his, of Draymond. I mean, this is the 50th time that he's having yeah. to do this, right? And with Wiggins, you know, whatever it was, it was just that one time. Um, and, and Steve's always been that type of coach, which which you love, I love. But with Draymond, it's you know, it's just dude again and again and again and again. The guys played less than fifty percent of the games this season. I mean, what is? I mean, way, we're not, actually, way, sorry, way less. <laughs> we're not we're not going down this track again. I I can't do it. But it's just, I, I think Steve is kind of tired of going out there and having his back when he when Draymond doesn't deserve it. So, um, yeah, I think Steve is right. Uh, um. Maybe that's why too. Steph's been kind of struggling. I just think mentally, right? That's his. That's his boy. That's his brother. I mean, him, him playing Draymond and Draymond being out and he's, not, he's sick of it. Sick of it, right? Yeah. That's yeah. the best way to put it. Maybe that's why, right? With Steph, it's just like that. That's why he's been kind of, kind of out of it a little bit. And tonight, tonight he he, he you know got back to his his normal stuff. But um, I I can't imagine it's easy for Steph. I guess we just don't talk about it enough. I I guess I can't imagine it being easy for him. Knowing that, like, dude, your your boy is just completely lost. He's lost, and I don't I don't know when Draymond's gonna figure it out. Maybe he never does. I tweeted about. Um, I don't think he's gonna ruin his legacy because his legacy is his legacy. He's one of the greatest defensive player defensive players ever, and all of that. But hey, man, he's trying. He's trying. Good luck to him. I hope I hope he doesn't do it. But man, this would be a pretty bad way to go out for Draymond. So. Yeah, I don't even think about it that way. It's just like it's it's ugly right now. Yeah, it's ugly. That's that's yep. all it is. All right. Should we get to the goons real quick? Mm -hmm.
to the goons. Let's go. Scare guy, Ishan up here. Hey, what's up, guys? What's up, Ishan? How you doing? I'm doing good. Um, pretty happy after this game. Um, just like, obviously, there are some big issues and just kind of ignore them. Just take whatever win I can get at this point. Um, but yeah, I mean, what you guys just mentioned about the Draymond stuff, like, saw it. And my first reaction was that hashtag he gone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I I'm cool with it. I obviously will miss him. I love him. I have his jersey, but like I'm fine with whatever they decide on that front because like I can't defend him anymore. Been doing it since 2016. Seven years now. Man has grays in his beard, children, wife, still same antics. Might even might even say it's getting worse. Um anyways. So but, anyways, but then today I wanted to just uh I think I was thinking about Kaminga and his situation with being compared to Franz all the time and just watching him today. I know it's been inconsistent, but just in general, I think I can live with what Kaminga is giving me at this point, And I'm fine with that draft pick. Um, I understand maybe Franz was the better pick, but with what I'm seeing from Kaminga, sometimes like that turnaround fadeaway jump shot, I was like, okay. And sometimes the explosion, I'm like, I can work with that. And I think Kaminga has taken a lot of fault from Wiseman. He's taken a lot of like, since that. Yes. Pick I like that. Yeah. He took, since that pick went wrong, like Kaminga has taken a lot of that, that um thing. And then another, another observation is I think CP3 has to get traded. I respect him. I like, I like when he shoots, but the ball sticks in his hand. It just, just doesn't work. And closing with them doesn't work. My last question was um, in clutch time, like we tend to start doing stupid shit all the time. It even happened this game. Like there's stuff like corner three goes in um, before the buzzer in halftime. And then Steph suddenly starts losing his mind and three turnovers in the span of like 10 seconds and then hits Jalen Suggs in the face or whatever was happening. And I was like, oh boy, here we go again. Do you think that stuff gets better? Is that coaching? Is that just bad? Like it's bad execution, but what does that even get better with the trade? Like what is the problem? Why do they keep shitting their pants at the end like of these games and wanting to give it away? You know, that's kind of my thoughts. That's all I have. <laughs> I mean, that's why he plays. Hey, Ishan, appreciate you calling in. Yes, sir. My, my thoughts on it is that's why he plays Chris Paul because he's a steady ball handler. Um, I, don't know. I I like Kuminka. I like Wiggins. I like a lot of those guys. They're not dudes I want handling the ball under pressure at the end of games. Yeah. Uh, and, and Steph, for as much as we love him, he gets a little wild with the ball at times. That's, so that's what I was gonna say. So you got it. You got it. Steph is a <laughs> Steph is a so madman. Madman. But he is well, part of what makes him so great is sometimes what uh you know. What what can get ugly, right? So he 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 does have weaknesses, um, but you know, the highs are the highs are the highest of highs. There's no high better than Steph. I think um, you can argue maybe there are certain players that are maybe mm, like Luca, like you would say is going to be like consistently consistent in terms of his play, but he doesn't have the high that Steph has. Steph can no. end it, Steph can end a game in ten minutes, man. It's no, just, you, you could argue in those situations you'd rather have a Luca or a LeBron because they're big ball handlers right, and right. they're strong and like you're you're not as concerned about them getting trapped because of physical uh skill things, but like I don't know, man. I kind of like watching 30 pull on everyone and yes, just sir. end a game like a psychopath. Yep. So you know, not perfect, but we can we can live Cl closest to it. All right, who's mm -hmm. next? All right, Tashion coming up. We're going to discuss the fact that, that I have come to an epiphany. Matt Chapman will be a giant, and he's going to sign yes. a bullshit prove it deal. Because no! I don't think he's getting the money he wants. No. And I will not wear the jersey if he takes oh. a two year, one year opt out deal, because that means <laughs> it's not. The money's not committed, Tatian. I just want that. I just, I just want to throw it out there. When Chapman signs a two-year Conforto deal, 
<laughs> I will not be wearing a wise man. So, oh, hold on, hold on. So, uh, from what I've been told by random people um, that know people, Sam sources, uh, uh, the Giants want to give him a four year with the fifth year um, as a team option, which is bullshit because Scott Boris would never allow Matt Chapman to sign that. But Matt Chapman wants a six year with the sixth year as the player option, which uh, six years for Matt Chapman is rough. So we're sitting here and saying, <laughs> who the, who are they betting against? Who they uh, sorry? Who, who they are bidding they, against? Who are they bidding against? <laughs> Scott Boris, Carlos Correa. Uh, that's who they're bidding against. Scott Boris just hates them, so he's just gonna like that like that Jung Hoo Lee deal <laughs> where he's just gonna make them pay thirty million more than what he's actually worth. I don't know, but uh, dude, that would be hilarious. I, I doubt that it would be any type of opt out. Doubts, but what the hell did I just jump into? This <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Oh, all right. What you got for us, brother? Um, so since it's a relatively good night, I do have one question. Um, so is Steve Kerr just not trusting pods to run the second unit? A uh, function of Moody not being able to like cut CP3's minutes, or is there any other reason to describe or? try to justify the DMPs for sure. Because obviously there's like a minutes crunch with like the wing slash guard positions that we have right now because of the shit tier CP3 contract that we have right now. So I'm just curious about like how does Moody get minutes to at least increase his trade value at bare minimum because this is getting kind of strange. At this point, let's talk some pods, Samuel. Let's talk some pods. I I, I don't view the pods and Moody thing as like one to one. Uh, Steve doesn't think Moody's a ball handler. Fair. Pods is. Uh, you could say maybe he doesn't need four ball handlers on the court at all times, but he disagrees with you. So I don't know. It, it, I feel like Pods is that. I think that's it. I feel like Pods is a minutes crunch with with Clay and Wiggins more than he is with uh, Pods and CP3. He disagrees with you. I mean, that's I can't. And we, yeah, it's that's just kind of where he's at. I, and he, it sucks. It sucks. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah he's he's Moody's in a tough place because. Wiggins is playing better. Clay's been better. Um, those guys are always going to get the benefit of the doubt. Kaminga's kind of – he's been better, but also in a little bit of a different role. And then Pajemski's a ball handler. Same with Chris Paul. But when we didn't talk about this tonight, GP2 is going to be out for a long time again. Um, so yeah. there's going to be minutes for Moody again. So there's going to be 10 to 15 for, for GP2. Oh, uh, excuse me, for Moody because – yeah, Sam, you, did you see that hamstring pull from from GP2? It didn't look good. I think goodbye, done. GP. Yeah. You cooked. Yeah, no, I know. I feel bad for him. He was playing well too. The oh, he's chats, done. The chats, it's a, God. You feel him when he's in a game. You feel him when he's in a game. He's the best. McWalters, what's up, my man? Yo, yo, what's up, guys? You know. Yeah, yeah. I'm, feel, I'm feeling baby. good about the W. Feeling good about the W. <laughs> Some good vibes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we saw a lot of things. Franz isn't awesome, but he's still good. He's definitely not worth a max, but he's going to get one. <laughs> so, you know, life sucks. He'll be Levine. He'll totally torpedo that franchise. Oh, whoa. Wow. Relax, relax. Ooh, Are you like kidding it. me? Ooh. Are you kidding me? He is not a leader. He is not a number one. You can't max him. But they will because they have no choice. And then they'll have to max Pablo, and then their and then their whole team will be screwed because he's not a number one either. <laughs> you know, so they've got two number twos. Um, but you know, maybe they can trade one of them. But uh, this isn't the Orlando podcast. They have their own problems. They can't even beat us. How bad are they? You know <laughs> what the hell? I mean, we're we're kind of a dumpster fire right now. They didn't look like they wanted anything to do with us. You know, it, 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 it's it's it was just a. I mean, look at Clay's guarding. Clay is guarding their 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 semi number one. Yeah, we didn't talk about that. It's a great game I by mean, Clay. What, Shout out to him. Yeah, great job, Clay. I mean, awesome. I I wish there were more Apollo like 
power forwards in the West that he could guard. Um, unfortunately, they're in the East, <laughs> you know, and we don't get to play them all the time, um, you know. But the things, the things I really like. Hey, Kaminga came out and played played hard. That's great. Thirty's thirty. That's awesome. I think we should be stoked about that. I, a lot of us were worried that this would be an L, and that we'd be staring at a whole bunch of L's coming up with Denver. And and now you got to be positive about it. We gave Denver a good show over there over on Christmas. There's a good chance that we could beat Denver. You know, it's it's not it's not inconceivable, especially at home if you get good clay. If you get good clay, you you can you can you can you can hang in with a, a Denver and maybe sneak one out. Right. If you get if you get the clay from the last couple of games, or you get Curry still on Christmas break, yeah, you know that, that ain't gonna be a good game. But this this gives you hope that that the Warriors can summon that from time to time, and that people shouldn't be so down on it. But again, we're a middling team, so middling teams will do middling things. They'll show up one game and they'll disappear for a couple of games. I like so. that one. I like that one. Yep. Oh, <sighs> all right, McWalters. I like, the, I like the Denver optimism, though. I like that one. I mean, they look, man. They played them pretty well on Christmas. They they outplayed them for a bit of bit of time. Um, wow, the chat is saying Warriors minus two against Denver. No way! Wow, look at that. Good for the Warriors. I think we're gonna end it here. Buddy Barnes at 22 years old. That fits him age wise. Siakam is gonna be 30 before the end of this season. Uh, he has started to really play very well again. Uh, he's got value around the league, but he's also going to be a free agent. And I think if you're Toronto, if you're not going to re-sign him, you can't let him walk uh, like Fred Van Vliet walked, uh, certainly like they lost a uh, Kawhi Leonard. Yep. That was a- so how much did Masai pay Woj to basically do a public service announcement that they're willing to trade Siakam? <laughs> I mean... More, more than he was willing to play OG on an OB, but you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't have anything to say on this. The Warriors are playing the uh, uh, the Raptors later this week. This pod's going to be so fucking thirsty when that game goes on. I mean, I mean, he's going to pull off a spin move against like Saric, who can't defend, and I'm going to come on here and be like, look like Jordan, look like Prime Jordan to me. You know, hey, uh, hey, I've been, uh, I've been reading, I've been reading a lot of uh, trade rumors out there from you know random, random Twitter or NBA reporters on Twitter, and uh, you know every time they throw out Sack, right? Every time they throw out Atlanta, they throw out Indiana. Samuel, how, how come the Warriors are never mentioned? Mark Stein wrote a trade rumors piece, you know, yesterday, and uh, nothing, no Warriors. So I, that's because Kent calls with a burner. <laughs> That's a per, He's per, per, from Kent. Oh God! Per, per, per sources, <laughs> Kirk Kirk uh, Kirk is using an encrypted WhatsApp. That's why they don't know. You know, He's on Signal. Is that what they're at? Oh, they're on yeah, exactly. that's, a, that's a new one. I just yeah, it's interesting. I don't know. It, hey, it's a, it's a fair call out. You never hear about the Warriors' name in these chats, and it, something someone said to me. I'll leave the pod with this. Oh. Nobody's name gets in the media without a reason. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if Indiana wants the world to know that they're trying to make a trade, it's for their own reasons. You know? Yeah. The Warriors didn't let anyone know they wanted to trade D'Lo or Wiseman until they did it. Uh, and and maybe, maybe that's me coping. Maybe that's me being like they're playing 4D chess in my mind. But, uh, you know. It, War, it, Warriors haven't played a 40 chess this, ages like, <laughs> since 2016. Actually, can, no, we'll can, can we at least admit, like Woj going on TV talking about, like this is all a charade. This is all for, this is all for show. Doesn't mean <laughs> shit, you know. Uh, the NBA is, is is they've got the biggest charades in sports. You know, they 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 really know how to throw the. <laughs> Draymond's in uh, the, the freaking therapy at LeBron's birthday. Yeah, it's all a charade. I mean, they did a whole in-season tournament. I mean, that's the definition of a charade. I mean, what what the hell do we – what was that? We still don't know what that was. The Lakers haven't won a game since that. Indiana's kind of fraudulent. Yeah, they, 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 they painted a bunch of courts. Some of them look cool. Some of them didn't. I don't know. Oh. I don't know. They changed the lighting. Oh, oh shit. In-season tournament night, we're dimming the lights. Actually, yeah. 
if you think about it, that's a good comp. Um, basically, the NBA is now an IG influencer. You know what I mean? Like you just if you put filters on, if you put different filters on, you look better. You know what I mean? They're like a they're like a good IG model. You, know, you, you throw on different different tires. Tires how. Tyrese Halliburton selling you a bunch of shit you don't need. <laughs> hey man, IG at least IG models are good looking. The the, the in season tournament, ugh. We'll try again next year. We'll try again next year. Anyway, <laughs> and w- <laughs> with that, I'm getting out of here. Good night. Later, later, guys. <laughs> Have a good one, guys.